Hey everyone, welcome back to the finals of the Popper Premier League. Uh, my name is Alex Holman, and due to some Discord technical difficulties, we'll be bringing you just me for the commentary tonight. So nice to be with you. Uh, we'll get that little screen thing sorted out shortly. But we just saw a really quick final semifinals, I guess you want to call it, between Chris Van Meter and Brian DeMars over in four games. Uh, Chris took match one uh, with his elves very quickly over uh, Brian's version of Sly or Red Deck wins. Match two was Chris's burn against Brian DeMars' Tron. Again, Brian managed to weather the storm, but he couldn't actually weather the storm of burn spells. So that brings us up to our finals. Our finals are going to be best three of five. Adam Yurchik got a bite all the way here by virtue of going 5-1. Uh, Chris Van Meter has battled his way here. He played last week, he played this week, and he's back. Uh, so really happy to see these two really excellent players in the finals. Um, there we go. So what we have here is we're going to have best three of five. Uh, both players brought two decks. Um, Chris has brought Mono Black Control and the same burn deck from his semifinals, while Adam is going with, you know, kind of the new meta. Uh, Chris's decks are kind of what you would expect when you think of traditional popper decks. You have Mono Black, you have burn these are long time staple archetypes adam's side you have you know a new strategy in four color snow kind of jeskai control featuring pulse and marasa and then an old deck that has new life and that's tribe combo so for those of you who aren't familiar tribe combo is inside out uses tireless tribe and inside out which is an instant from eventide where it basically flips power and toughness tireless tribe you can discard cards to make its toughness big but then you can attack, flip its power toughness, deal a ton of damage for not much. This was a preeminent gush deck. Um, Michael Jacob played it a bunch when he was streaming the Popper Challenges. Really powerful deck, but gush got banned. And last week we saw a different version of this, which involved Tree Folk Umbra and the uh, Encore combo. That was the last time Adam played. But this one, you know, there's a new piece of tech, and I'm not sure who came up with it first. I first saw it from... It was either a member of the Brazilian community or the Italian community. I'll be honest, I, I can't remember which uh, the first time I saw the list, but basically uses this card from, I believe it's Ice Age, but it was printed in a master's edition called Whiteout. And the text on the card doesn't matter. It's one in a green. Uh, I think all creatures lose flying until end of turn, but that's not what matters. What matters is you can sacrifice a snow-covered land to return it to your hand. So with four or five snow-covered lands, you get plus... You know, you get four or five tireless tribe activations. So we're going to see that tonight. But how the decks line up right now is we have mono black control versus four color control. Uh, you know, I played a bunch of mono black control, and I would say that the four color control list is advantaged. Um, and this isn't because the cards in mono black control are bad. It's just that four color control is trying to do something very similar, but it does it just a little bit better. It has a more dominant value engine with Ephemerate Archaeomancer. It has stack control in the form of Counterspell. It has Moltrifter, where the Mono Black Control deck is kind of doing this one for like two for ones, where Adam Yurchik's deck here is really trying to play a three for one game. So while it could go either way, I think this one definitely leans more towards Adam. Um, just from the way the decks are lined up. Match two, we have Burn versus Tribe. So these are really two combo decks. Um, right now, Tribe is not nearly as fast as it used to be, but it can still get a turn two kill with just a natural turn one tireless Tribe, turn two inside out attack you. The thing there is Burn can go over the top. Uh, this is a close matchup. I think it favors Tribe just because... Both players are just completely ignoring what the other one is doing. And that's where it's going to get interesting, because in matches three through potentially five, each player is going to have to pick one of their two decks. So we're going to get into this situation where the players are going to try and figure out what deck their opponent is likely to play, um, and then try to counter that. Looking at all the decks, Mono Black Control is advantage versus Tribe, and Burn is slightly advantage versus the Four Color Control deck. But both players are going to know this, and it's not as if these advantages are huge. Popper's not a format of massive advantages, except in very specific matchups. 
So what we're going to see is something really interesting coming coming to be where we're going to get into this interesting leveling game. Um, right now, we are just just about ready, but you know, want to give a huge thank you to Cool Stuff Inc. for helping to bring you this event. Huge thank you to Wizards of the Coast for throwing their support behind us. Um, I want to thank every competitor. You know, it's been amazing to be a part of this. But something that's really been wonderful for me is a chance to interact with people like Michael Bunda and Andreas Peterson and Emma Parlow, who stayed up late, woke up early, just to be a part of this. And then just the opportunity to play with Brian Koval, who was helping us last round, to play against Brian DeMars, Ricardo Montaña, someone I've talked to a ton and actually had a chance to interact with, with on this, has been just an absolute delight. Um, but it sounds like we're ready. So you're going to deal with me. We're going to watch some magic. Let's get down there and get to the finals of the first ever Popper Premier League. So Chris's hand is pretty solid of unremarkable. It builds towards a gray merchant basketball and he's on the play, which is actually really good. Adam's hand on the other hand, sorry, is a little slower and is lacking a key card in Arkham's Astral. It does have preordained though to go digging. So what we're looking at here is Adam is very well set up for the long game with two copies of Moldrifter. He really wants to find the ephemerate to start generating a ton of value. Chris, on the other hand, gets a perfect draw, sign and blood to go up back up to seven cards. The witches he drew isn't so great, and even Chittering Rats isn't going to be huge. Uh, because Adam is going to be able to draw so many cards. Right here, the Astrolabe. Um, Adam really wanted to find a land off of that, but he's going to hit his next land drop anyway, but looks like he's going to have to discard the hand size. Um, here, I'd probably discard... No, I don't know what I'd discard. It might be Bolt. It might be Brainstorm. Yep, Brainstorm. Uh, meanwhile, Chris is going to deny a draw, which is pretty big because it's going to mean... Adam is at least one more turn away from whatever is on top of his deck, and he really wants to find land. So he's going to spend a Mole Drifter here, digging for land four. Does he find it? Yes, he does. And now Adam is really well set up. He can draw tons of cards next turn. Um, Chris, however, is going to start getting in for damage. He's going to be able to draw cards of his own with Phyrexian Rager or Sign of the play might be Sign and Blood and Witches just to build devotion for Grey Merchant, which is one of Adam's, uh, Chris's best way to win the game. Chris drew a huge card here in uh, Bojukabog, which is going to be able to take out the graveyard, which Adam is treating like a toolbox. Adam, meanwhile, has drawn out of his... Uh, he's drawn into land. So he's he has some interesting choices to make this turn. Looks like he's going to... Start with Astrolabe, and he can take care of all four of those black pips uh, by just spending both Lightning Bolt and Scred. And he isn't going to find that much many more better targets than what he has right now. So Witches are off the table, but Thorn of the Black Rose is huge. This is going to come down, and it's going to set up Chris to just draw a ton of cards thanks to all that removal in his hand. I think he might be respecting Counterspell here, but... At this point, no, I think that that was the best move possible for Chris. He can slam Thorn and just start churning through cards. Yep, here comes the Bajukabog taking out Adam's Graveyard, and it's going to be a few turns before Adam can even threaten Chris's life total. This Moldrifter is good, but it's going to be met with Oubliette. It's going to be met potentially with Chainer's Edict. Two lands off the top is not what you want to see if you're Adam. And, you know, another great draw. Chain Rose Edict is very good against these Ephemerate decks because it doesn't care about bounce. It doesn't care about flickering. It's going to get its card no matter what. Um, that being said, Chris doesn't have the fastest clock right now. He really needs to draw Grey Merchant Vasfidel. That was a fantastic draw. Ooh, but here we see the Ephemerate engine, and that's pretty big, or it would be, if not for the Chainer's Edict in Chris's hand. So how this is going to play out is going to be really interesting. If Adam goes for the Ephemerate now, 
he might get blown out. If he waits next turn, he's going to get at least a card worth of value, but still, yeah, he's being patient, but he's still going to lose this Archaeomancer. So I think Chris, I don't want to say he's turned the corner, but he's definitely pulling ahead just a little bit here. Swamp off the top is not what he wants to see, but he has so many options. He he's has enough removal to handle every threat. He's at seven, so he can flashback Chain Resedict. Edict. Um, there might have been some defense for going for Oubliette there just to build Devotion for a Grey Merchant. But yeah, I think you can wing Grey Merchant into play, four-point life swing, and now you're starting to really put pressure on. Uh, it's not going to take many more draws before... Chris just takes over. So what does Chris draw off the Monarch? Another land. That's not what you want to see when your opponent draws another Muldrifter. And Muldrifter with Ephemerate is a lot of cards. Um, but it's a matter of whether or not Adam is going to respect removal. Uh, if he... It, it matters whether or not he's going to respect the potential for Defile. Um, that Counterspell is... Pretty big, though. He can play around Defile now, but I don't think he can play around Edict and Oubliette. Drawing four cards, though, is, is big game. So let's see, how does what do these four cards yield? Skyfisher, Forest, Dispel, and Ash Barons. That Dispel looks pretty bad against Chris's hand. Of course, Adam doesn't know that. Um, another Oubliette. Okay, so... Chris is going to get his man, so to speak. He's going to get that Moldrifter off the board, um, it, no matter what. So I think if you're Adam, you have to fire off this Counterspell, and that's just going to be met with the Oubliette. And yeah, it, it's not over. But right now, that Ephemerate is going to be stuck in exile, so it won't be retrievable by the Archaeomancer. Adam is Chris. Adam is down to five, and Echoing Decay, you know, does get stopped by Dispel. But let's see. Yeah, Adam leads with Skyfisher. Going to pick up a Astrolabe, replay it. He's going to draw a decent number of cards this turn, but I don't know if he can stop all the removal spells. Um, he really needs to find a counter spell and if he does things are okay and there it is oh but he he hasn't played a land yet this turn so let's see how this plays out it's going to be interesting it's going to be interesting how chris sequences his removal that's going to be key to this next turn it's not what you really want to see I think if I'm Chris, I want to lead with Oubliette because I want to bait out the counter, and then I can Echoing Decay. Um, because you can't. Oh well, you can Edict and Decay in the same turn, and you can Oubliette and he's going for the Edict. Okay, so this is actually a really good play because it might end up because it prices Adam into blocking, and with Echoing Decay. Uh, Chris has a potential for a real two-for-one here. Yep. And Chris, Adam is going to get punished for this, and Chris is going to ride the Monarch uh, for a few more turns. But another land. Chris has just been drawing land after land after land. And a lot's going to... I think... How much mana will Adam have access to this turn? Uh... He'll have access to another eight. So he spreads a pretty big draw. I'm not sure it's going to be good enough. Um, Chris, sorry, Adam can play Archaeomancer, get back Scred. And looks like he'll be able to Scred the Rager to buy another turn. But unless he gets back Counterspell. No, he's getting back Scred. Um, Scred buys another turn, but next turn, Chris can Oubliette and Edict. So, yep. 
And the coast is clear to Oubliette and Edict. Does Anna pick up the Archaeomancer is the question, or does he want cards? He wants cards. That's a pretty big draw, too. But Adam, uh, Chris basically has to... He can't play cute with this Bajuga bug. He has to get both threats off the board, or else he's losing his flow of card advantage. Um, with Adam tapped out, I think you just chuck that Oubliette into play. Yep. And you've put... Uh, Adam on a one-turn clock. So Adam is going to get at least two draws. Scred's a pretty good draw. It means that, uh, well, the game isn't over. Uh, Chris has a ton of potential draws. But I think... So Scred... Well, no, game's over. Crypt Rats ends this game. Um, I think that if you're Chris, you try to force the issue, and when it resolves, the game's over. So, you know, this was not a matchup where I really favored Chris, but he's putting in work. Um, you can see the power of the Monarch here. Unanswered, it, you know, even unanswered, it drew a ton of cards. That being said, uh, Looks like Adam has drawn six more cards than Chris this game. And thanks in part to Muldrifter, Astrolabe. Uh, let's see. Yep, Scred. Oh no, just block. Oh no, Scred. Okay. I wonder why Chris did that before he played, uh, after, before he played Bog, or after he played Bog, rather. Um, Come on, Chris. And that should do it. Chris Van Meter playing mono black control, just mono swamps. That's what you got to do. And takes game one of our finals. So what do the players have to bring in? Um, it does not look like Adam has a ton to bring in for this matchup. Chris, on the other hand, Gets to bring in more instant speed removal. Gets to bring in Pestilence if he wants. Gets to bring in... It looks like another copy of Duress. <laughs> Chris is signing out his Witches while Adam is signing out the Spellstore Sprites. Let's take a look at these lists real quick. I think if you're Adam, you want to try to find home for Relic. And if you're Chris, I really like Pestilence in this matchup. It is this, re it's the best, it's one of your best card advantage options in the long game because uh, there's no way for Adam to handle it. But it looks like he's just leaving the one in. Chris is a much better player than I am, so I'm going to defer to him on this. Looks like Adam is thinking about how many copies of Seeker of the Way he wants in his main deck right now. Looks like he's settled on one. So let's see. Looks like... We're back at it with Adam on the play. Adam appears to be lagging just a little bit. Once again, a really good hand from Chris. He's going to start off with two copies of Sign and Blood. He's going to he's going to draw his cards. But on the other hand, Adam has kind of that ideal opener. You have Astrolabe, you have Preordain, you're gonna, Adam is going to see a ton of cards this game. Let's see. So Astrolabe, it also looks like Adam Mulligan and put a Evolving Wilds on the bottom. One, two, three. 
Yeah. So now, let's see. That Pestilence, though, it can do so much work against uh, Adam's deck. Let's see what's going on. Uh, interesting. So Adam played the patient, snagged the first sign of blood, which is a smart play. Uh, usually when you're casting sign of blood early, it means you have no other play, but also a lot of times mono black control is digging for its land drops. Um, that relic is going to do work, but it's not at its best in against mono black control. Um, you, you turn off some of their two for ones, but not all of them. And once it's on the board, chances are Chris is not going to play that edict out unless he absolutely has to. On the other hand, it looks like Adam is spending his early turn sitting up his mana. So he's going to find a third land here. The question is going to be whether he preordains a relic. I think the play is preordain. Um, no, relic. Okay. It shows you what I know. Uh, yeah, you're trying to constrain the graveyard as much as possible. But at the same time, Chris is going to be able to sign in blood again, draw into more spells potentially, and that defile is potentially going to be important later in this game. But right now, both players are kind of just trying to set up, and with Counterspell, uh, Adam is better set up to stop Chris, and that uh, Skyfisher is huge right here. So Skyfisher will pick up Astrolabe, but is met with Defile. And right now, Chris is again... Oh, there's that Thorn of the Black Rose, again! And now, Chris is the one who's in the driver's seat. Adam is choked on mana, Chris is the one with all the removal in hand, and Adam needs to find mana. He is... He has passed with... Okay, so this is, for anyone who's played uh, Monarch versus Delver, this is kind of a just traditional line of don't do anything, play my spells that are sprite, and steal the Monarch. And then what's going to happen is, yep, he wants two draws to get to it. Okay. Oh, interesting. If I'm Adam there, I wonder if I just flash out spells that are Sprite and go for it. I mean, then I can attack, get the Monarch. Granted, he didn't know about the Echoing Decay, but that is a play. You're not getting a ton of value out of Sprite otherwise. I, I think I make that play. This is gonna this uh, Grey Merchant is going to be met with a counter spell for sure. I don't see any way that Adam lets this result. Oh, he could scred it. Yeah, you scred this. No. Adam isn't too worried about Chris's board right now. With... Yeah, now he's going for it. Okay. And without a Defile, it looks like... Yeah, uh, Adam has set this up so that he's the Monarch now. And there's... Yep, by doing this, he's able to untap, scred the Grey Merchant, uh, won't be tempted with, uh, he might be tempted with a uh, Mole Drifter, but he's going to take the Monarch, he's going to start drawing cards, and really the only way for Chris to get the Monarch back is to draw it naturally. And now the tables have turned dramatically. Duress here is good, but not great. Um, it's going to be met with a counter spell. Oh, no. That is brutal. Flicker on the spell star sprite. I th don't know if you let it resolve.
this is this game is turning in uh, Adam's favor very quickly. Um, but again, Chris has stranded ephemerate, which is incredibly important. Now, granted, here's Small Drifter, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Here comes the monarch again. And now Adam, Adam is on the back foot. He might have a removal, he might have a blocker next turn, but Chris can Oubliette, Chris can Pestilence, there's Grey Merchant, and Adam is going to see a ton of new cards, and they're all great. Uh, he gets to put two lands back, he gets to shuffle them away with either Evolving Wilds or Ash Barons, he gets to Skyfisher, he gets to Flicker um, with Ephemerate, but... A lot's going to depend on how he sequences, obviously. It all depends on how you sequence. Um, he puts back, looks like, two dead cards. Shuffles, one, shuffles them away with Ash Barons. And I think if you're Chris, when you see the Sky Fisher, you have to just go for Edict. You can't play around Ephemerate. You have to play around Ephemerate. Um, I wonder if you're Chris, if you just snap off a Cryptgrats for six here. I think you have to. Yep. You are the burn deck here, and, you know, this puts Adam down to eight. Eight is not a lot. But this... This is actually huge for Chris. Chris can untap Oubliette the Skyfisher. Gray Merchant put Adam down to four. And with that Pestilence, between Pestilence and Crypt Rats, there isn't much Adam can do to get out of this. You know, I said this was advantage to four color control. I might have been just wrong. I mean, I... I think that four color control is the better deck but i think that adam is not spending his ephemerate here to draw four he is okay he, he sees the line um it's cheaper and you see more cards so i don't see why you would pay five when you could pay four uh and draw four Counter spells pretty big game. Um, Scred also, but <laughs> that great merchant. I mean, it's an embarrassment of riches for Chris. Chris can just do whatever he wants. He wins this game. He wins the match. He's up one nothing in the finals, and that's it. That that was not a match I expected Chris to win. But you know what? Chris has been doing this all season. He's been winning matches he wasn't supposed to win, and that's how you get to the finals. So Chris is up one nothing. We have at least two more matches of Magic. Uh, next up, we're going to see Chris's burn against Adam's tribe combo. This is going to be interesting. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute. You'll be back with me. And once again, next up, we'll have Adam on tireless tribe combo versus Chris on burn. It's going to be a fun one. So we'll see you in just a few minutes. Bye.